If you've clicked on this video, then we have something in common, a lifelong hatred of lag. You know it sucks, we know it sucks, but it happens. But do you ever stop and think about why it happens? If you do, then this video is for you because we're gonna break it down for you. There are two main things that cause your game to lag, distance and congestion. Let's go through congestion first of all. You all intuitively know that things such as large file downloads cause congestion on your network. But have you ever wondered why? What's actually happening? To understand this, we first need to understand how data is transferred across networks. This bit gets a little bit sweaty, but I'm gonna go very slowly, nice and clearly. So just hang in there, okay? This bit is crucial. There are two main protocols in which internet data is transmitted, TCP and UDP. The best way to remember these I've found is to think of them like shipping options, but for the internet. TCP is the super reliable shipping option. It makes sure that the data that it's sent has been successfully received by the recipient. If it works out that it hasn't and the data hasn't been received, it will simply resend it. This protects the quality of the data, making it the ideal protocol for things such as file downloads, emails, and many other things. UDP is the faster of the two shipping options, but it's less reliable. It doesn't check to see if the data that it sent was received by the recipient. Instead, it just continues to send the data. But the fact that it's faster than TCP makes it the ideal protocol for things that are happening quick in real time. Gaming, for example, Zoom, another application that it's used for, things like that. You might think, yep, UDP, TCP, that's cool, but what does it have to do with congestion? An awful lot. So much so that TCP has its own congestion control measures built in. Let me give you a real life example to help me explain it. Let's say there's a new Warzone update. The me and you are gonna download it. We hit download at exactly the same time. You're on a 100 meg connection and I'm on a 10 meg connection. We know instinctively that your download is gonna happen faster than mine, but it's not just a simple case of you receiving the data really quickly, a lot quicker than me, and then your download being done just like that. There's a lot more to it. And this is where TCP congestion control works its magic. To start with, data is sent to us both at exactly the same rate. TCP, as we know, checks to make sure that the data has been successfully received. If it recognizes that it has, it will send us the next bit of data and it will send us more data. And gradually what will happen is it will increase the rate at which data is sent. So it's sending us data faster. And this process continues over and over until we hit a certain point, a max threshold where our network has become congested and essentially there is a traffic jam of packets on our line. Don't forget, it's also common for somebody else in your home to be watching Netflix. So you've got these packets fighting through, maybe someone's on a Zoom call. So you've also got those packets fighting through along with your war zone download. It's become a little bit of a mess on your line. Eventually the queue gets so long or the packets have been sat there for so long, there's no choice but for your network to discard some of these packets. We call this packet loss, but more on that in a minute. At this point, TCP recognizes that our network is clogged, so drastically reduces the amount of data that it's sending to us. Once the traffic jam is cleared and the packets have passed through our line, the process essentially starts all over again and the rate at which data is sent is slowly increased. So if data is being sent to us both at the same rate, why does your download happen faster than mine? Let's go back to the graph. Remember, you're on a 100 meg connection. I'm only on a 10. My network gets congested a lot quicker than yours. You can take a lot more data before that traffic jam starts to happen and you've hit the max threshold. That's why your download happens faster than mine. So to clarify, data is sent by UDP or TCP. Remember the shipping options comparison. TCP is a lot more reliable. If packets are lost, it resends the data protecting its quality. UDP is much faster, making it ideal for real-time things such as gaming, but less reliable. Well, you might think, why doesn't gaming then use TCP if it protects the quality of the data? Well, gaming needs UDP's speed to keep everything happening in playable speed at real time. It's as simple as that. Imagine this scenario, if gaming was using TCP, somebody fired their gun. The data wasn't successfully received because there was congestion on the network. At this point, the game could potentially freeze for all players while TCP resent that data and made sure it was received from the game server once done so, the game could then resume. It would literally be unplayable. UDP, as we explained, much, much faster. Instead of making sure that each packet was successfully received, it just continues to send new packets. Obviously, each new packet 
contains more relevant information than the previous one. So yes, packet loss does occur from time to time. You know, there's times where it's skipping in game. That might be what's happened, but the new packet comes in and replaces it so the game can continue. Now, the other factor, aside from congestion, is distance. Now, the problem with distance is pretty self-explanatory. When we're talking about distance, we're talking the distance between you and the game server, because as we know, when we're online gaming, data is traveling from you to the game server and back again. The time it takes for this to happen is measured in milliseconds, and it's what we refer to as ping. Now, here on the screen are the game servers for some of the most popular games played today. I'm in the UK, and as you can see, the further away from the UK we get, the longer it's gonna take for the data to complete its journey. It's just like traveling in real life, really. The further the distance you have to travel, the longer it's going to take. You might think, well, that's okay. Data can travel at speeds close to the speeds of light. And you're right, it can. But even at those speeds, it's still gonna take some time for the data to complete its journey. And of course, it doesn't happen as the crow flies. It has to follow international networking cables. They don't link countries directly all of the time. So that's distance and congestion explained in a nutshell, but there are also a couple of other things that are worth considering too. One of them being the stability of your line. We often assume that our connection is just performing as it should be without any issues, but sometimes that's not the case and it's not always your fault. You can find some free software in order to check this. One of them I'm gonna link down in the description for you. It's called Ping Plotter. And what you're looking for is a nice, steady, consistent ping without any major spikes on your line. If that's not what you're seeing, it might be worth getting in touch with your ISP and giving them a call just to make sure that there are no issues from their end. Then you have other factors such as whether you're gaming with a wired or wireless connection. Whenever possible, we always recommend a wired connection because other obstacles and other electronic devices are just less likely to interfere. Wi-Fi can be vulnerable to that. Finally, the quality of your TV or monitor or the controller that you're using. Does it have a high refresh rate? Is the signal from your wireless controller unobstructed? Are you using a wired controller? Have you got the latest graphics drivers installed? All of those things can also play a part, so it's worth doing your research as well. The good news after all of this doom and gloom is that we can help. And if you don't know who we are, we're NetDuma and our award-winning router operating software, Duma OS, can help solve all of these network problems for you. As we explained earlier, distance is a major cause of lag. Our patented geofilter is the only real solution to this problem. You could move house, of course, but one, that seems a little bit excessive, and two, you're still probably gonna bounce around from server to server from time to time. The geofilter enables you to play on your favorite servers every single time you play online, guaranteeing a consistent ping. Simply use ping heat map to find your favorite servers and then use the geo filter to draw a radius around them and all outside connections will be blocked. It's as simple as that. So that's distance sorted, but what about congestion? With network priority, formerly known as QoS, there are three features, congestion control, bandwidth allocation, and traffic prioritization. These are all gonna work simultaneously to help eliminate local congestion and give your gaming traffic the VRP treatment it needs, pushing it straight to the front of the queue on your network. If you want any more information on anything that we've discussed in today's video, check out some of the guides on our channel page or visit our website, netduma.com for more info on how you can get access to Duma OS. I hope you found this video helpful and not too overwhelming. Let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next one.